fair wages everywhere. We want fair trade everywhere. Approximately 12.45 p.m. Occupiers gather at the Port of Houston, some local, many not, perhaps a hundred in all. Their numbers easily matched by police, well equipped and clearly intent on containing a raucous crowd. This is a military style uh, police presence. Mike Jack! Mike Jack! The occupier's mission depended on whom you talk to. Most raise voice against the so called greed of multinational conglomerates and the export of U.S. jobs. Many wore scarves and masks to cloak their identity. There are plenty of jobs available if we would bring them back here from, from Malaysia and China. And it's time for us to get together and actually do something about this damn broken system. If you can't see my face, I could be your neighbor, I could be your mom, I could be the guy down the street selling you groceries. And that's what it's about. It's about the people. Around 2 p.m., a dozen or so occupiers adopted a more radical tactic aimed at a temporary shutdown of traffic into the nation's second largest port. When two separate squads of occupiers laid down on the street, police both on foot and mounted firmly moved in. After ignoring multiple warnings from police, the protesters appear willing to go to jail. This is what the future looks like. This is true democracy. To execute the arrests beyond the sight of cameras and irate Occupy supporters, police deployed a mobile red tent, drawing a barrage of verbal abuse. What are you trying to hide? What are you trying to hide? One by one, those in custody emerged in cuffs. Police maintained composure, and a confrontation that could have turned violent simply ended, peacefully, with no one hurt. And all 20 occupiers were taken into custody. Six will face felony charges for blocking a public roadway with a criminal device. Don? Yeah, a couple of points on this today, Greg. First of all, you mentioned that there were some out-of-towners here, and at the same time we see these new tactics show up. I'm wondering if you could tell how many of these people were from other cities. Where did they come from? And is that what brought in this whole PVC pipe business? It was really hard to tell. I got the sense that there were quite a few from Houston, but also some from Austin and from other parts of the country. I talked to one woman who had been in an Occupy situation in Washington, D.C., so there was quite a gathering. I'd say 60-40, 60, 60 Houston, 40 from around the state and around the country. As for the, the PVC pipe, that was an interesting tactic. Uh, basically, they were linking their arms through PVC pipes in order to uh, stop the police from taking them into custody. The red tent, we are told, was used to cover fire department's use of a cutting device uh, as they cut the pipes off of those taken into custody. The fire department said they didn't want to spray the crowd with debris. That's what we're being told. Okay, I guess we'll leave it at that for now, Greg. Reporting live for us, thank you. Well, today's march was part of a nationwide day of action at the nation's shipping ports. Officials closed two terminals in Portland after about 200 demonstrators blocked delivery there. Police arrested two men there who were dressed in camouflage and carrying a gun and walkie-talkies. Meanwhile, for the second time in as many months, protesters managed to shut down the port of Oakland. The group says it is targeting two shipping companies, SSA Marine and grain exporter EGT. SSA, because it's owned by Goldman Sachs, and EGT, which is locked in a dispute with dock workers near Portland.